I think, uh, you know, uh, Pakistan's future uh, is largely determined by Pakistan's actions and by Pakistan's choices. I mean, nobody reaches uh, a difficult situation uh, sort of suddenly and without cause. So it is for them to find a way out. You were talking about these concentric circles when you said the neighborhood and then there's the second. Uh, one of the most dramatic achievements of your foreign policy has been uh, India's newfound status and reach out uh, to the to the UAE, to the Islamic world, to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, that's been quite an achievement. Mm-hmm. When was that decision taken to reach out? Because otherwise, it all that one heard was that OIC has something to say on Kashmir. That was the maximum that one heard, even though there was this large Indian people of Indian origin living in the Middle East. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, if you were to ask me in 10 years, give me two, three examples of some big changes which have happened uh, in our in our policy, uh, I would certainly uh, put uh, our change relationship with the Gulf mm. uh, very, very high uh, up there on the list. Uh, why didn't it happen earlier? Uh, my own sense, if we want a very, very honest answer, is I don't think people were strategic earlier. Hmm. I think, they, you know, when you have a vote bank mentality, uh, you actually, you, you're not serious about foreign policy and uh, I would say operationalizing it. For you, it's like a slogan that they are with us or, you know, uh, so we kind of treated it as that's a place that, you know, the, the, we get our petrol uh, energy from there. There's a big community out there. And the rest of it was like a like a uh, like a distant, you know, uh, a goodwill uh, which you needed for your political vote bank calculations. I think when you got a different government which said we are, you know, we we actually want something deeper, more strategic, with full elements, a full spectrum relationship. We have the ability today to deliver on a lot of issues of your concern as well. Uh, we are seri- you know, part of it, one of the reasons why the Gulf looks at us. The Gulf sees today's India as much more credible than the India of 10 years ago. And, you know, as they say... That's in spite of India having a right-wing government now. I would say, you know, that's, that's why you need to think of this kind of labels. You <laughs> ask people in the Gulf, do you prefer Prime Minister Narendra Modi or any of his predecessors? I'm willing to take a bet with you. Every one of the Gulf countries would say, I prefer the... Uh, Prime Minister Modi. Why? I think they think he's a more serious person. Uh, he's a person who makes, who's more credible, uh, who's who's actually broad-based that relationship. Hmm. He's done more for the relationship than everybody else. And you know, I I must once st- I I tell you very honestly, uh, I I was once at a conference in the Gulf, and I had some friends hmm. from across the parliamentary hill with me. And uh, this issue came up. And the person from the Gulf, actually, and this was like maybe 2018, 19, he said, you know, these guys, he's looking at me, he said, they've done more in four years than you guys did in 40. Is Kashmir on the table now? It used to be, I know. Is Kashmir on the table when you deal with uh, countries in West Asia now? No, I, I, what do you mean on the table? Do they speak about it? Do they ask no, you about no. it? No, why would, I mean, look, Kashmir is part of India. I mean, that, that's it. That's that, it was always a part of India, but after the abrogation, there was a Pakistan had up the ante. Does that matter at all to these countries? No, it doesn't now? come up in any of my conversations.